doesn't need to be long. I think we're at a practice session. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Deanna, for mentioning that because I am notorious. Everybody knows I am notorious for not turning on the rec recording <laughs> button. So <laughs> thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. And thank you for uh, joining this morning. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time out um, and, on, and to our guests as well that are on with us today. Um, you know, just wanted to um, you know, thank you again for being patient and understanding as we kind of navigate ourselves back to Zoom um, and uh, just, you know, working out the, the kinks and um, the hiccups along the way. So we're just trying to do our best to try to make it as easy and efficient for everyone to be able to join um, and also to be able to um, contribute as well, so thank you so much. I'm going to put the agenda in the chat um, just in case uh, you uh, missed it in emails or on the website. Um, and if you need to uh, have a copy and look at that. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, maybe I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't share. So I'm going to just share my screen for uh, a minute. But um, when we when we get to the agenda um, and and uh, proof for for our meeting, but um, I wanted to call this meeting to order. Oh, good morning, welcome. Thank you for logging on. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Maggie. Um. Oh. Uh, Dr. Uh, Maggie, I want to try again with your audio. I think you had yourself unmuted, but I didn't hear. I said good morning. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> good morning. Uh, we're just uh, now beginning the meeting and um, going to call the meeting to order. Um, today is August 20th, 2021. Um, the City of Albuquerque Commission on American Indian and Alaska Native Affairs. Um, welcome everyone and guests uh, for the uh, first item today. Uh, we'll have a roll call to establish quorum. Um, and if I can have Thelma help me with that as well as confirming um, attendees as well. So if um, commission members, if you could please uh, turn on your video and just let us know that you're present here today um, for roll call, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, uh, Dr. Lloyd Lee, are you present today? Yes, good morning, I'm here. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Commissioner Denise Zuni, are you present today? Good morning. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Maggie George, are you present today? Good morning. I'm here. Thank you, Dr. George. Uh, Commissioner Lorenzo Jim, are you present today? Oh, I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm present. I'm here. And good morning, Thanks. everyone. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Commissioner Marissa Naranjo, are you present today? Okay, I don't see her on the panel. And if Don, if you can just um, double check as I'm going down the list, um, if anybody's on the other <laughs> on the other list or is in, in the uh, public um, list, just to make sure. I double checked and she is not um, in the attendees. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kyle Tapaha, are you present today? Oh, 
Okay, not present. Uh, Commissioner Thelma Antonio, are you present today? Do I grass say hopa? Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Kim Gleason, uh, are you present today? Present. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Commissioner Kim Benali, are you present today? Okay, not present. And Commissioner uh, Jimmy Secretaro, are you present today? Oops, him on. Okay, not present. I have, and myself as well, I'm present. <laughs> I have seven commission members present today. Um, can you confirm, Thelma? Uh, yes, that's correct. All right, thank you. We have established quorum for today. Uh, we can proceed on with our agenda um, to 1B, our invocation. I wanted to just open it up to um, commission members or, or our guests, if anybody would like to provide our our invocation. This is just, uh, it can be a prayer or just words of affirmation for us to start our meeting off on a good foot. <clears throat> All right, thank you. And I can provide one as, as well too if, um, that's okay. So um, if you would all please uh, join me um, in a brief uh, invocation, just some words of encouragement as we start our day together and, and share this space with each other um, in our work for, um, you know, not, on, on, not only on behalf of, um, you know, our community, but for all people. Um, not yet. Nice to hear. Dawa at Mayunat eats at Jai Watch Chani. Hitna Bakai may at Mayunat tea shoppers. Jai Watch Chani. Hey, a oot yumi drunny new ultra scored from Anish. Mother, Father, Creator, thank you for giving us this breath of life. Please continue to help us to make it easy for us to learn. May it happen so that we may help continue to help support, show compassion to each other, to our community. May you make the this work easy for us to see uh, the things that we need to see, for us to learn the things that we need to learn, and for us to continue to do the work on behalf of all, not only just Native American um, communities, family, friends, loved ones, but for, for, the, for the good of all people and for the good of this world, uh, we thank you for giving us the blessings and continue to provide um, those blessings and those things that uh, give us life and meaning um, to us. Continue to uh, protect us and provide us strength um, for all of our leaders, for all people, in a, in a position of leadership, continue to guide them and, and provide them strength as well. Um, thank you for all the things that we are so blessed with. Oh, thank you, everyone. Um, I wanted to just take a moment to introduce our meeting agenda guests um, this morning, uh, just to give some time to have them introduce themselves before we uh, go into our agenda. Um, this Today we have uh, Lorraine Edmo with the National Indian Youth Council Incorporated. And I believe you've brought some uh, individuals along with you this morning and just wanted to 
um, ask if you could state your name for the record and just briefly introduce yourselves. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. Okay, thank you very much, Rebecca. It's really um, an honor to be able to present before the commission members. And my name is Lorraine Edmo. I am a member of the Shoshone Bennett Tribe of Idaho. Uh, my current position is senior advisor um, senior manager for the National Indian Youth Council. Uh, we're transitioning to a, a new executive director and he's on the call with us, uh, Mr. Stephen Haniestawa, and he will introduce himself. And then right af after he does his uh, presentation, we'll hear from Deanna Akiar. She's our um, operations and development director. Okay. Great. And um, uh, Ms. Akiar or uh, Mr. Honey Estewad, uh, do you want to add anything? Go ahead, Deanna. Well, good morning, guys. This is Deanna Akiar. I'm a citizen of Isleta del Sur Pueblo, and I'm happy to be here this morning to uh, share with you the work we're doing over at the National Indian Youth Council. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, uh, my name is Steve Honiestua, a member of the Hopi tribe, uh, Second Fox Nation of Oklahoma. Um, as uh, Ms. Edmo had uh, stated earlier, I am the new executive director for National Indian Youth Council. Uh, pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, looking forward to seeing a uh, partner uh, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll be hearing from the three of them a little bit later on um, in the agenda. Our next um, let's see, item is approval of the meeting agenda. And I thought I could share the file um, in the chat, but it looks like I can't. So um, I'm gonna just share my screen with you all. So um, if you haven't had a chance to see the agenda, um, you can take a minute to look at it. And I just wanted to draw um, your attention, uh, commission members, just um, you might have seen some slight changes uh, to the meeting agenda format. Um, and um, there, there will be some um, slight changes um, introduced over time. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, we added um, uh, contact information uh, specifically to the website and the physical location of the Office of Native American Affairs, as well as the phone number. Um, we also included just some more direction and instructions for, you know, general public um, for, for um, uh, people to be able to log on. And also, if there's any accommodations, we want to make sure that we're reaching out and making it, you know, easy for um, the general public to um, join on virtually. Um, so I'm going to go down to the agenda items itself. So we have approval of meeting agenda. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here i'm gonna slightly zoom out so i'll just give everybody a minute to look that over I have a I have a question. Sure. Uh, is that a sorry? I can't see you on the on my video I, list. I can't see myself either. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so under four D approval of the commission monthly report to the mayor presented um, by Commissioner Denise and me. If I was given that assignment, I must have forgotten. So I'd like to. Um, I, well, I realize it's just under discussion. Well, it says approval. So if you were expecting something from me, I don't have anything. But we can discuss it. 
um, I just don't want to approve anything because, um, yeah. Let's let's just discuss it and remove the approval unless someone did one. I didn't. No, I we um, yeah. I think um, yeah. We can we can change it to discussion. Okay, perfect. Is that okay? Is yes, that okay yes. with the commission members? Does anybody object to changing uh, for the, I guess I should have numbered that one too, um, the bullet point, the second bullet point to changing approval of commission monthly report to the mayor presented by Commissioner Denise Suni to discussion. Does anyone object? No, I, I move that we approve the agenda with a recommended um, item for discussion to be presented as discussion for today's meeting. Okay, um, just one quick second. Are there any other edits um, to the to today's agenda? Okay, uh, Dr. George moves to approve the agenda today with the um, with the change of uh, the word uh, approval to discussion on 4D. Can I get a second from commission? I'll second. Commissioner Denise Suni seconds. Can I get a vote um, in the chat? by commission members, if you agree yes, no, or abstain. Okay, I have a yes from Lorenzo, yes from Denise, yes from Thelma, yes from Maggie, yes from Dr. Lee, and yes from Kim, and a yes for me. So the uh, agenda for today, uh, is approved. Thank you, everybody. Okay, moving on to item three, approval of the July 16th, 2020, 2021 uh, commission meeting minutes. Um, I wanted to ask uh, by everyone if it was okay to table that. Uh, we had some, um, challenges with getting our link um, from the last meeting uh, up and and getting the meeting minutes out to everybody. So um, I do apologize. Um, Thelma and, and Don were working on getting those together and I wanna just be able to provide more time for the commission to review them and um, make sure that uh, we collect any edits back with um, enough time to do that. So I wanted to ask if it was okay with everyone if we could table that for um, September's meeting and we would add both August and July's meeting minutes to the agenda. Is there anyone that objects to that? Okay, can I get a motion to approve to table the July 16th, 2021 meeting minutes? A motion to um, table the minutes. I'll second that. Thank you. I have a motion from Commissioner Denise Zuni and a second from Dr. George. Can I get a vote of yes, no, or abstain from commission members in the chat? Okay, I have a yes from uh, Lorenzo, a yes from Dr. Lee, a yes from Thelma. You can also verbally say yes as well. A yes from Denise. Uh, 
Uh, Commissioner Kim uh, Gleason abstained. She was not present for the last or for the meeting minutes or the meeting um, last month. And a yes from Matt, Dr. George, and that's a yes from me as well. So the um, the meeting minutes for July 16th will be tabled to the next meeting. Thank you, commission members. Our next item number four, new business. Uh, we have our community guest presenter, um, National Indian Youth Council Incorporated um, with us. And so, um, uh, Ms. Emo, I will pass it on to you. You now have the floor. And um, uh, like we mentioned, um, if you have a PowerPoint, you are free to share that as well. Um, members of the public will be able to see that as well as panelists. Um, and uh, we will have a, a little bit of time afterwards if there's any questions from the commission members, uh, we appreciate your time to do that with us. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. I wanted to acknowledge our uh, board member, Dr. Maggie George. She has been a board member with NIYC for a number of years. And um, I know she's a great representative for all of us on the commission. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge our partners. Uh, we've been working with Lorenzo Jim with First Nations on a number of um, initiatives, wellness initiatives, and um, we've got a good working relationship too with Don Begay, uh, one of the city staff members. Um, but what we'd like to do is have uh, Steve provide some opening remarks and then have Deanna share our uh, brief PowerPoint. So, Stephen. <laughs> Absolutely. Good morning. Um... Everyone, thank you so much for the opportunity to um, allow us this particular platform and to be able to convey some thoughts on behalf of um, National and Youth Council and the work that we provide um, to um, various family members, uh, individuals that are transitioning from reservation areas into the Albuquerque, Farmington and Gallup area. Um, our PowerPoint will provide a little bit of an in-depth analysis to the services that we're able to provide for possible participants. And so at this point in time, um, I'm going to turn things over to you. <laughs> thank you, Stephen. And yes, thank you everyone for your time today. I'm going to go ahead and share screen. And can everyone see our, our PowerPoint here? And let me see if I can go to, okay. Good, slideshow. Okay, very good. So thank you all for your time today. Um, I just pulled together some brief points, brief talking points um, to remind everyone or let everyone know, you know, National Indian Youth Council has been around for 60 years. We are a 60 year old nonprofit, we are, uh, which is a really long time. We're very proud of that. We've got offices in three cities here in New Mexico, uh, and we can service any, any place that's um, considered an urban location in, in New Mexico. So um, we are specializing in our workforce development services. And very proudly, we have a staff and our board of directors. They're both 100% native, uh, and they represent our constituency very well. We also have a large network of local advocacy and social services. Um, as Ms. Edmo had mentioned, we have several of our partners um, on this call today. Okay, so um, we operate a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act grant. It is a grant from the US Department of Labor. We have a training and employment program that's basically intended to serve those that are living in, in our cities. So these are natives who, have, who are living off the reservation. We offer job placement, we have internships and classroom training programs. And we also offer case management and supportive services, which are really helpful for those who are in transition. Um, I pulled this slide together just to kind of let you know what our impact has been using WIOA funds. Uh, WIOA's purpose is for us to increase employment, retention, and earnings. And um, in a, I did a 10-year analysis of our program data, 
we found that 68% of our participants exit employed. So uh, we are really working towards that end. Another one of our uh, purposes with the WIOA program is to reduce the welfare de dependency. And uh, data analysis has confirmed that 56% of our participants are on public assistance of some kind. So we have not been tracking um, those that are off of public assistance at exit, but that is something that we are uh, have in the works to start tracking. Um, also, we work to increase the occupational skill attainment and just really improving the readiness of our local workforce uh, in, all, in all the cities that we operate in. And um, we, we do that through our workforce experience program and our classroom training program. So we do have uh, several current collaborations in the works. Uh, we have been working with the Office of Equity and Inclusion and Human Resources there at the city uh, to increase the internship opportunities um, within the various city departments. And so that's a collaboration that we're working on. And we're also in works with the, um, or in talks with the Workforce Connection of Central New Mexico. And we have an MOU that's gonna be signed here uh, in this next coming, well, by the end of the month. And we offer training and we have partnered with the American Indian Business Enterprise and uh, several other organizations throughout uh, New Mexico to um, provide training and uh, training opportunities. We uh, definitely have our, our outreach to the statewide network of college, universities, technical, vocational programs. As we, uh, we do support education as being one of the primary ways that we can impact economic health for our communities. There's our three offices and that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of what we're doing here. Thank you. Any questions? I have a comment. Um, I just want to say welcome to Stephen, to to uh, NIYC, and and I know that the work there at NIYC has been going on for six decades, and and I know uh, as a board member, we're looking at not only um, I think focusing on workforce development and training, but also. Uh, kind of revisiting the original mission to look at ways to um, promote advocacy and leadership development for um, people in our community in um, here in the urban area. And I know that, and, and I think the other piece is just really the opportunity to network with organizations such as the city and other nonprofits to create opportunities for networks for um, people to connect to. And so that we, um, our indigenous community here in um, Albuquerque, especially, is not just operating in a bubble. Thank you. I have a comment. Go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank Lorraine and her team for um, doing your presentation today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, my question is um, has to do with um, activities for youth. I in the 80s I used to work at the NIYC Youth Center. Maybe that's what it was called on Second and Mountain. And I thought it was such a great thing because the youth from Alba that lived in Albuquerque, their parents would bring them, they would drop them off, they'd go to work all the way from the from ages of five to 18. And then throughout the day, there will be youth just stopping in and hanging out, doing arts and crafts. Um, there were a few computers in there. Um, they could update their resume. Um, and so I just wondered, you know, what happened to that portion of what NIYC used to do? Um, and are there any plans to bring those type of activities back to Albuquerque? Because I think that's what's missing in Albuquerque. Unless it's somewhere else, I don't know about it. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll try to answer uh, that. And then either Deanna or Steven can uh, chime in. But we, I think NIYC in the past 
um, during that time must have had a youth services grant through Department of Labor. And right now we just are, uh, are um, granted funds to serve 18 and above adults, 18 and above, all, you know, all the way up to 70, 80 years old. <laughs> um, but we, um, in order to serve youth specifically with Department of Labor uh, funds, we have to be authorized by a tribe to apply. Uh, we just talked to our federal programs officer a couple of days ago, and he told us um, if a tribe designated uh, us to provide or to apply for youth service funds through the Division of Indian and Native American Programs, we could do that. We could apply for those youth service funds. But, but if a tribe nearby like uh, Sandia or Isleta, if they are already serving youth with their money and have a youth services grant, then we can't um, apply. We would have to get authorized from a, from a tribe to do that. So we're thinking of, you know, we can investigate that over the coming year and see if there's an opportunity to do that. But we do collaborate with um, with uh, First Nations on wellness initiatives, and uh, we just helped with um, providing transportation to events this summer that were sponsored by uh, Lorenzo's office. Um, we helped with about six different wellness hikes and uh, sessions that were held during June and July. So we're still really interested in, you know, we still do work with youth in a, in a different way, as long as we have some uh, general funds to do that. So, Stephen or Deanna, do you want to add to that? Um, I'll add that, you know, we've also, you know, in working with the youth or our efforts to work with the youth, um, I put it out to our offices in Farmington and, and Gallup, as well as Albuquerque, to find organizations throughout you know our cities that do support um, the our community whether it be the youth or be you know specific advocacy area areas such as the um, murdered and missing indigenous women and um, to find those areas where there is activity and to you know be a part of the community in supporting and showing our support so um, even though we are we don't have the actual office <laughs> for uh, or the off the space for the youth, we are still supporting our programs through other avenues. That's, that's really great to hear. Um, and I think just learning about your organization is, um, is really inspiring, especially um, uh, the point that you shared that 68% of NIYC participants exit employed. I think that's truly amazing. Um, and, 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 and thinking about, you know, the, the longevity and sustainability of the organization over such a long period of time. Um, I'm like, okay, 60 years ago, what else was around here? <laughs> yeah. um, so that, that really is uh, amazing. Um, and, and thank you so much for your continued work. Um, I guess the question that I have, and one of the reasons why uh, the commission um, uh, really likes to have um, community organizations and programs, initiatives, um, even individuals come and present specifically on what they're doing is, you know, um, one, to, to learn about what's happening in the community, but also to as the commission to provide support on any any things that you feel like um, needs to be a priority. Um, as an advising body to the mayor, uh, we wanna make sure that we are um, uplifting and highlighting um, those uh, needs of the of the of, of native residents and the surrounding uh, tribes um, um, so that you know the, the mayor is aware and can take action on those items. So I'm just wondering, you know, are there any barriers or challenges um, that you're currently experiencing that this commission can, um, you know, bring to light? Or are there any initiatives that you um, currently would like to see more support on 
um, even if it's just getting the word out about what you all are doing, your events, um, we, it would be great to, to learn about that too as well. Okay, well, I think one of the, one of our um, needs right now is we need some more applicants. <laughs> we have uh, funds to spend for our um, WIOA grant and um, we've advertised on our website, we've advertised through Facebook and because of, you know, the COVID um, situation over the last year and a half, it's really been difficult to try to recruit people especially in the Albuquerque area. And I think the, the, the fact that some unemployed are getting the unemployment benefits, then that they are hesitant to apply. But we have funds available to, um, to get, bring people on board and to place them in you know, various offices, like the city offices, um, um, other nonprofits or other organizations, companies around the city, we do have funds um, to bring people on board for both classroom training. We pay 1050 an hour, even for classroom training and also for um, work experience. So it's just getting the word out that we need need applicants. So I think that's the big one of the big pushes right now. But I'm sure over the coming months that, you know, Stephen and Deanna will be um, coming up with or be thinking of some other ways that the commission could help could help the organization because I'm going to be leaving in a few months I'm going to be retiring again for my second time <laughs> so they they'll be carrying on the work and I'm sure we'll be you know advice will will uh, provide some ideas to you and the commission on how you might be able to further help the organization Okay. I wanted to, thank you, Lorraine. I wanted to respond to the question provided by Ms. Zuni. Um, thank you so much for that question and your thoughts and the, the history as far as um, all those things are concerned and you know, great questions that you provided for us. I think um, some of the directive that we want to um, have ourselves involved in as an organization um, are, are really strong. I, I really appreciate the thoughts and that somewhere that we as an entity want to move toward fiber we do want to provide like a community assessment or a community survey that supports um, the body of work so that way we're able to provide that um, to our potential funders and um, lets us um, provide an in-depth analysis uh, in the work that we plan on doing and um, we are a heavily grant-driven uh, foundation, and so that's uh, in the nonprofit world. Um, unfortunately, that's that's what we rely upon, and unless we have other uh, founders or, or givers that are able to support us uh, monetarily, and so um, you know, I, I want to take a deeper dive into what direction um, our stakeholders want us to move toward, and and how are we able to um, get from point A to point B. Uh, to ensure that this is something that the community wants as well. And I agree a thousand percent that um, we do need a central location for um, our youth uh, to, to be actively involved. There's, um, uh, I'm, I'm a child of the 80s and you know, 70s, and so I, I realize that um, each uh, generation is different. However, um, I, I, I don't see them being as active as, as they were whenever I was a uh, younger child. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, I think uh, one of the interests of this commission um, is definitely understanding and um, being able to look at data, and and and, and coming. You know, I, th I think one of the things that um, is really hard is the lack of data um, that's available, especially. Um, around the Native American population and community and residents and surrounding areas um, in order to help us make um, those decisions. Um, so that that would be, I think, um, of interest to this commission to learn more about, you know, where, where are we at right now? Um, and what are those trends? What do those trends look like um, um, as far as, you know, your work and, and everything else that's, you know, all incorporated into that? Um, just wanted to take one more moment to um, ask if there was um, any other 
um, questions by commission members for, for our guests before we move on. Ah, uh, yes, this is Thelma. I have a question. Um, when you talk about um, training and classroom training, is this for uh, uh, for like uh, workforce training or is this like a educational type? Like say someone um, needed to get their GED or they wanted uh, uh, more uh, focus on, on uh, secondary education or needed assistance on that. Can you explain um, a little bit further on the training portion? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that question and uh, and thank you, um, Ms. Antonio, for, for it. Um, and yeah, the classroom training program is actually for any student that's going to school in New Mexico. And um, it's any school. It can be a beauty school, it can be a vocational school, it can be a university, uh, a state-sponsored school. If they are going to school in the state of New Mexico, they can uh, qualify for our classroom training program. And the classroom training program is really just a stipend. We will pay each student $10.50 an hour for going to class. So that's one of the real selling points that I would like to push with this program is that if you're a Native American student in the state of New Mexico, you should be registered with our program uh, just to get that benefit. I mean, we've all been there in college, you know, that $200 or $200 every other week uh, can be really helpful, it can be really helpful. That's gas money, that's, that's you know, food, that's whatever you may need. So um, it's not just for uh, classroom training, like where we train people to enter into the workforce, it's for any student. This is Kim, um, thank you for your presentation today. Sorry, Thelma, did you have something else? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, do you guys have any um, uh, events coming up that we can help promote? And I know that November is a big month for all of us. Um, if you guys have anything, um, I work in the arts organizations here in Albuquerque in New Mexico. So I'm very interested in bringing youth uh, on, under my belt all the time. We actually have a collaboration right now with IAI, a similar program into training uh, new artists that are coming up from, uh, from uh, their own level of arts. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to help share and promote with you. Um, if you guys have any um, programs that, or anything that has to do with the arts, um, please feel free to let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to share my information with you. Um, I think this is a really good program. I've heard many um, good things about the organization. Um, a colleague of mine, Terry Gomez, I believe she's worked with you many times before in the past, and she's always said some great things about you so thank you for your work and um in the community thank you yeah thank you Kim. i think as far as events the one that I, that comes to mind right now is uh we'll be we'll have a booth at the new mexico state fair um for about five hours where we'll we can provide information to individuals about the program and how they can sign up and be certified um, and then we will you know there'll be other um, career type events throughout the year deanna are there any others in the next two months that you can think of yeah we've got the welcome back days happening at unm and so we will have a booth there um, we will be at unm's on campus at the duck pond and um, let's see here that's on the 20 i want to say it's the 27th it's next week uh, next Thursday. So, um, and we also have our, our, our social media. We have a staff member who's been charged with keeping up with our social media. And so any of our, of our events that they would be posted to our Facebook page. And so one, one way that maybe we can keep the um, information flowing is to communicate with all of you uh, through our Facebook. Is there any way you can share that Facebook info on the chat? I surely can try. Let me see here. Let me get over to the chat. And yes, I can. Okay. We'll, we'll get that up to, to the bit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, any information, uh, please uh, send to us. And, and if you need to send anything by email, um, you can send it to me and I'll, I'll pass it on to all of the commission members at once. 
um, yes, any contact information links, uh, feel free to share that in the in the chat as well. And you are welcome to um, listen in for the rest of the meeting as well. So I just want to uh, thank you, um, Ms. Edmo, Mr. Hani Yastua, and Ms. Akirar um, for attending today. We really appreciate your time and presenting the information and, and continue to, to do um, the, the good work that you're doing. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you all. I, I've um, included my email in the chat box as well. Great. Thank you. All right. Our next item on the agenda today is uh, BCABQ uh, updates by uh, Don Begay, Terry Salom, and or Isaiah Curtis. And um, we talked a little bit about um, uh, beforehand how we can make uh, some of the Albuquerque announcements a little bit more targeted um, to uh, you know what what the commission um, is what commission members are are doing as far as contributing to some of the um, action items or initiatives or activities uh, with the city. So um, rather than providing a kind of a list of uh, things that the city is doing, uh, we'll continue to um, provide information through emails but not necessarily during this meeting time. Um, so you might see this portion of the meeting change or just kind of shift slightly um, uh, because we do have commission members that are in various areas working with the city. Um, in particular, um, Ky uh, Commissioner Kyle Tapaha uh, um, and um, I believe Kim Benal, is it Kim Benali? Um, they're both working on projects with both Don and Terry, and um, it would it'd be great to just get a report back from commission members if there's other activities that um, you all have participated in or other things that you feel like uh, you would like to just provide the commission as a whole um, updates on. So um, you might see this portion of the meeting just change a little bit just to target on those specific items. And then the general city updates that Terry and Don have previously provided, uh, we'll continue, continue to do that, but through email. Um, so um, if, if, um, if you have any questions or any other ideas on how we can make this portion of the agenda um, um, useful, um, and uh, more meaningful, um, uh, please let me know. And uh, we'll also have some time at the end of our, of our agenda today to discuss any, any changes that um, you all might want to suggest. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Don and Terry. Thank you. Thank you, commission members. Um, Yes, in terms of the city of Albuquerque's um, Native American Homelessness Liaison, Isaiah Curtis, he has accepted a full-time position within the city of Albuquerque's new department, the Community Safety Department. So he started there, I believe, two weeks ago. And so his position with the Native American Homelessness Liaison right now has not been filled. Um, and after talking uh, with both First Nations and the Family and Community Department, the, that position will not be filled until Family and Community appoints um, their Deputy Director for Housing and Homelessness Services, which would be a new position. So that is temporarily on hold. As soon as that position um, has been filled and they identify another person to appoint as the liaison, we will inform the commission. Um, in terms of our Office of Native American Affairs and Office of Equity and Inclusion, um, one of the big things I want to announce is that our City of Albuquerque Office of Equity and Inclusion is conducting a dispar disparity study in an effort to identify any disparities in the utilization of minority and women owned businesses as it relates to city contracts to obtain goods and services client services and construction services. So I am going to drop in the chat 
the survey. Um, if you can help promote the survey. So if you are a woman or minority owned business um, to please conduct this survey, this will help us uh, a lot with the planning um, and to identify if there is a disparity within business as it relates to city contracts. And so this will be open until August 29th. The next update we have is that our Office of Native Medicare's website, new content has been added and has been restructured and reorganized. And so please check this out. We do have a listing of all of the tools, um, reports that the city has completed in relation to Native Americans. Um, this is a, being updated constantly, improvements are still being made, but I wanted to let everyone know about that. And then also some of the accomplishments we've had was just to um, complete the co-host or support the initiatives, including the um, Native Leaders Collective of Albuquerque's back to school, school drive last week. So that was a multi-department effort where APD, our office, mayor's office, constituent services really helped to promote the event. Um, as mentioned by NIYC that uh, some support was given for the uh, youth summer camp. And so we learned a lot about joint use agreement between APS, the city of Albuquerque. Um, there is a joint use agreement for certain parks and facilities where we may be able to host a series of different events. So the first one we did was at near Manzano Park uh, for the last day of the youth camp. Um, and Lorenzo Jim was instrumental in that as well as Phil Farson from APS and Terry for really coordinating with our solid waste cleaning clean cities and mayor's office to help get the facility cleared and um, able to use for for the event. And the last piece in terms of upcoming pieces is our partnership with the National Indian Youth Council. They did mention that we are having a, um, a closer partnership and the ask of the commission is one of the events that we have um, at the very beginning process is to host a virtual career slash resource fair in November. And so we are wanting help um, with a planning committee. And so a date hasn't been set for the first meeting for that. So if any commission members are interested in participating with that planning committee, please um, email me or you can also email NAYC just to kind of get interest um, on that end. The second piece is um, updates for the 4-H park. And so we will probably also be looking for um, also another committee to help with implementation of the recommendations and also the review of the recommendations just to kind of um, have a joint decision-making process. So after all the implementa uh, recommendations have been submitted from both tribes, and community and stakeholders, you know, um, to have a committee to evaluate and then also make uh, decisions on that. So any commission members that are interested in being a part of that process further than putting input, also email and let us know. We are currently still in the gathering information process. Um, and then in terms of the other updates with commission members, so yes, the subcommittee for the commission subcommittee for homelessness um, chaired by Kyle Tapaha. We have been working very closely with him and Kim Benali and Lieutenant um, Gerard Bartlett, who is our APD ambassador. So they're in the process of collecting information and also developing recommendations uh, which will be submitted to the administration regarding unsheltered Native Americans and women experiencing violence and sexual assault. Um, so we are in the final process of the recommendations and um, it is being reviewed and edited by our office and then a copy will be submitted to, to the commission. So this is a report or a recommendation memo that's gonna be submitted by our office and some of our community stakeholders. Um, and it also has the commission members apart, but it's not uh, a commission memo, but we definitely would like 
to forward it to you for review to get the commission to officially, um, if you come as a collective, decide if you want to also support the recommendation letter. Um, it, again, it is still being reviewed and edited by our um, director and deputy director, but as soon as it's complete, then I can forward it to the commission for, for review of that final edit. So those are the all the updates that I have at this moment. I will turn it over to uh, Mr. Terry Slow. Good morning, commissioners. I'm glad to see everybody's um, smiling faces today. Um, I think Don covered most of what we uh, have been working on, particularly in our, our change on what we would like to present in working with the commission members. Um, but again, I would like to I would like to commend um, Lorenzo Jim in his work and his efforts on working the na on the native health uh, healthy youth camps, which I think were very successful. And uh, I think we're looking for a brighter future on those camps. But, but to add to uh, uh, the collaboration that we're doing to, to look at um, uh, with, this, with the APS uh, real estate offices is we're looking at land, uh, possibly for future use um, for various uh, health, uh, uh, native health, healthy youth uh, uh, programs and camps again. And so we have looked at several places already and we're continuing to look at uh, other sites that APS has as possible, you know, permanent sites uh, or else even sites that we can utilize um, uh, in different parts of the city based on the time of the year. So that we'll be looking at that. Um, one site we recently looked at was the Los Padillas site, which is near Los Padillas Elementary School, um, which was like a very, uh, nice uh, na nature preserve, uh, had a little lake, has a little auditorium. Uh, so we're looking at possibly using, utilizing that and revamping that site for use by a native or, or any, any, any youth actually. So we're continuing to work with the APS and uh, First Nations on that. And then in regards to the uh, Albuquerque Indian School for h Park issue, uh, thank you for those commission members that did attend our meeting, our stakeholders meeting. Um, just to remind you today, we will be uh, receiving a draft of the initial report from our, um, um, uh, our team that helped provide moderate the meeting. Uh, um, bridges of Peace, I believe is what they're called, or Peace of Bridges, yeah, Bridges of Peace. So once we get that report, uh, we'll distribute it, of course, to the members to take a look at and provide thoughts and feedback. Uh, we also continue to wait uh, on the tribes to provide us additional guidance on what they would like us to do with the site. Uh, I did get a call from the Hopi tribe, and they uh, apprised me of some of the issues they are concerned about, uh, particularly wanting to know if we had information on um, names of Hopi children or youth that were there, possibly. And then also curious to know if the uh, site was being protected and then, uh, and then working again with the tribes and the communities on uh, arriving at a solution, um, providing like healing and spiritual type services. Uh, so we will, we will be moving forward again, assessing the recommendations as they come in uh, and then apprising the commission of, uh, of those issues that we find uh, more directly. And we are again, looking for recommendations from the commission to the mayor. And so we're hoping to uh, also get that information from you at this point. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Terry, before we move on, um, another ask of the commission, especially the tribal representatives, is if you may be able to help us get some of the responses from our tribal leaders or recommendations and feedback on the future of this site. So this would be a direct ask for our tribal commission representatives. If you have like additional questions or information on the correspondence that has already been submitted, Terry can provide um, a copy of the correspondence that has gone out by the mayor, um, director David Simon with Parks and Rec, and then the information that Terry has also um, submitted. So this is one of the crucial pieces is, is getting that feedback and recommendations um, from, the tribal, from the tribal leaders. And then the last piece that I also forgot to mention is Deidre, our intern, our NIYC intern, who has also 
is in the process of transitioning into full employment with ACS. She developed the in City of Albuquerque Indigenous um, Language Access Toolkit tool guide on providing assistance for city departments on how to incorporate tribal, um, excuse me, indigenous language tra um, translations and interpretation services. And this is, we're in the process of absorbing her toolkit into the larger city um, language access plan. Uh, so if any of the commission members are interested in reviewing editing or providing feedback on the Indigenous Language Access Toolkit, which it still has its own it's draft version and it hasn't been officially um, adopted yet. Uh, please also reach out to me. This would be another way to kind of um, encourage the city to utilize translation interpretation and cultural imaging and messaging for any type of, of communications that go out into the community. Um, right after Spanish, indigenous languages, especially Navajo, um, is the second most spoken language within the city, yet we do not have a strong uh, language access plan for indigenous languages. So this is, this is really, really um, important, uh, especially for the city to adopt as a whole. So I really ask if anyone is interested to please um, let us know in the chat or table for a future conversation if you're interested in being a part of that process as well. Thank you. And quickly, Madam Chair, one more item. <laughs> um, I'd like to point out too that uh, Commissioner uh, Denise Zuni did provide additional outreach to the tribes on behalf of the commission. She uh, spoke with her tribe as Leta and also sent the inf information to um, Santa Ana and Sandia Pueblo. So she did do some outreach also, thank you. Thank you, Don and Terry. And before I open the floor up for commission members, if you have any questions or comments for Don and Terry, I uh, just wanted to, I forgot to recognize earlier, um, Commissioner Marissa Naranjo um, is on. Um, and I think we lost Commissioner Lorenzo Jim somewhere. <laughs> so um, just wanted to make sure that was noted in the meeting minutes. Um, but thank you for the updates. And um, sounds it, it's it's really good to hear um, commission members participating in activities and providing their input and um, you know being present for for those um, for those things that are that are impacting um, our community, um, just wanted to open it up for uh, questions and comments. And also, if there's any um, if any commission members uh, want to um, participate in any of the asks that Don and Terry have. I don't have a particular question um, in terms of what they just said, but I did want to ask uh, the entire group if uh, the, uh, the two board members that have officially left um, in Seattle and Britain, if that's been replaced yet, those two. Your audio is messed up. I can't hear you. You're kind of going in and out. So might want to just uh, repeat it one more time. <laughs> I was just asking um, if the, I, it had nothing to do with the um, the questions that they ask. Um, I guess it does uh, go uh, hand in hand. Uh, but I did want to ask if the two seats that uh, just left for the commission, Alicia and Brittany's position, were they uh, replaced? Or is there any update on that? Uh, so just in case um, that was Miss uh, Commissioner Gleason was asking if the uh, vacant positions, um, vacant commission, vacant commission positions have been filled yet. Um, and uh, um, um, no, they, they haven't yet. Um, I think um, the application link is still available. Um, but we can table that item specifically to discuss at the next meeting if that's okay with with members to get an update and okay. Great. 
And if the commission requests, we can include that as a standing agenda item in the updates on whether or not we've received any new applications, or if it's um, the the city council. They did. They were in break for July, I believe. Um, they go on break every year uh, in July, and so we'll we can provide updates as a standing piece of our agenda action items. Any, oh, go ahead, Dr. Lee. Yeah, um, Don, you had mentioned that Isaiah's position is not going to be filled until family and community services uh, fills their, their other position. Can you give us a timeline as to when that will be and how long that Isaiah's, the position that Isaiah held will be vacant? No, I cannot. Um, and so for a little bit of background, the contract that is for that position is um, an add-on to an existing contract with First Nations. And okay. so uh, this is a conversation or this was a mutual decision made through both First Nations and family and community. Uh, both in terms of right now, First Nations has um, a shortage of case managers. And so they're waiting to also increase their number of case managers. So that way they can also um, have someone work one day a week um, within this position. And it also kind of um, aligns with uh, family and communities. Um, it would go on to the new deputy director so they're kind of waiting on one another and they didn't give um, a timeline. However, I think, you know, that was one of the things I wanted to look at is how long is too long because there's quite a few issues, especially related, you know, to our unsheltered population that need immediate attention, including the opening of the Gateway Center. And I believe family and community is going to be um, looking at their five-year housing comprehensive plan. Um, and so our input is extremely uh, needed, especially for the number of unsheltered population. And so I'm kind of really looking to also um, Kyle and Kim's involvement in this to kind of help supplement that. But um, this may be another request to see, like we urge, you know, the the city to fill that position as quickly as possible. I think that would be, you know, left vacant for too long really does uh, set us back in a lot of our a lot of our pieces. So that would be another ask. Is it, it's not within our office; it's under family and community, which is why we don't have um, control of the contract. We can only encourage them to fill it as quickly as possible. Yeah, I yeah, I I would agree with you. I think this it it's very easily to just let it go and and not even you know fill the vacancy unless there's pressure put on them. And I think as a commission we need to put some pressure on them. I don't know if that's writing a letter or or setting up a meeting and let them know that you know support uh, that this vacant position needs to be filled as quickly as possible. Um, as you said, Don, you know there's a lot of um, priorities related to um, the homeless population. And so, uh, yeah, I would agree with you in the sense that this, this needs to happen quickly because it's very easily to just, you know, sweep it under the rug and, and forget about it. Um, mm -hmm. When in fact, right, the report a few years ago, the, the, the reestablishing of the commission um, was tied to um, you know, the two, uh, two Navajo men's deaths and the homeless thing. So yeah, I, I think that's a concern um, and I think we need to push it. If there is a meeting, um, we can definitely help support or arrange to schedule a meeting with the director of family and community and or the administration. I agree that um, we should write a letter and perhaps this is a letter to the mayor instead of the, the department. Uh, Denise uh, wrote in the chat, yes, let's do a letter. So it sounds like uh, this may be a, an action item for the commission to uh, make a motion on. 
Um, how do um, other commission members feel about writing a letter and I'll motion that we do a letter, that we prepare a letter to the mayor's office and copy the um, both both um, the department, is it called Family Community Department and uh, First Nations? Okay, I have Commissioner um, Denise Suni motioning to uh, write a letter. Is there any other, do I have a um, second or does anybody else want to provide comment? For the record. Uh, Kim, kind yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. I'll write it in the chat. Okay, she's gonna write it in the chat. Any other commission members have uh, comments? I'll second that motion. I don't know if Kim did that, but. She was gonna just write her comment in the comments. <laughs> okay. Okay, she said, agree. The cold weather is coming and she seconds. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll give the second to Kim. <laughs> All right, um, Denise uh, Zuni motions and uh, Commissioner um, Kim Gleason seconds. Uh, can I get a vote from commission members in the chat or verbally? Yes, for me. Yes, for Dr. George, a yes from Dr. Lee, a yes from Zuni. Um, Denise Zuni, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes from uh, Commissioner Marissa Naranjo and... This is Thelma, yes. Thank you, and it's a yes for me. The uh, motion to uh, uh, provide a letter um, is approved and um, can I have a commissioner volunteer to lead that drafting? And I can I can provide my support as well in drafting the letter, but does anybody want to? Well, since I motioned, I, I'll um, volunteer to do the first draft. Okay, I can I can help you with it as well too, Denise, so we can okay. work on it together. Okay. All right, and then we will send out for review to all commission members, uh, just as review and, and any final edits and uh, contributions as well. All right, thank you. Any other um, questions, comments for Don and Terry before we move on? Okay, thank you. Um, we do have a break built in uh, for five minutes. Um, I think we do have some time for that. Um, just, you know, if you need to do what you need to do, um, we'll come back here at, let's see, it's 921 right now. Uh, so in five minutes at 926. All right, so we'll see everyone in five minutes. Thank you. And pause. Okay, never mind. There we go. All right. Um, the meeting is now starting or continuing. Um, really quickly, uh, we lost forum. Uh, let's see here. Dr. Maggie George had to jump off because she had an appointment and Dr. Lee um, did too as well. So uh, with that, we have remaining myself, Commissioner Denise Suni, uh, Kim Gleason, Thelma Antonio, and Marissa Naranjo. So we can continue on with the meeting agenda, but we will not be able to approve um, any action items. Um, so as we go through the agenda, we can 
we can um, address kind of next steps if we need if we need um, commission members to approve, you know, what will what that will look like or what we need to do as far as that. So um, does any anyone have any questions? Okay, I see your comment, um, Kim, that you're here. Uh, Commissioner Denise Suni, Thelma, Marissa, can you let me know if you're on? Oh, you're on mute, <laughs> but I see you. Sorry, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Just to make sure. <laughs> I felt alone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, I see um, Commissioner Naranjo's comment here. She's saying she's here. Okay, um, so our next item was 4C public comment. I did not receive any public comments. Um, just wanna check in with Terry as well. Um, did you receive any for today, um, Terry? And you're on mute, Terry. Or maybe he stepped away. Well, we'll come back to see if Terry had any, uh, received any, but so far we don't have any public comments. Our next item was 4D, discussion approval on any new action items. Um, the first bullet was uh, continued discussion regarding the Albuquerque Indian School burial site and plaque and um, was really hoping today that we could discuss um, and hear from commission members of you know what their thoughts were as far as providing um, a formalized recommendation to uh, to the mayor on this particular issue, um, as well as hearing from commission members, um, you know, kind of what they feel like um, would be the um, way to do that kind of next steps um, would it mean a subcommittee drafting something or would it mean um, you know our continued participation in in those uh, events that are like the stakeholders meeting and I just want to also thank um, commission members for being able to be part of the city's stakeholder meeting um, that happened last Friday I believe um, so thank you for getting on and participating in that conversation. Um, so I wanted to just give an opportunity for uh, you all to just kind of provide your feedback on, you know, as a commission, what is our what is our next step, um, and what are our what are going to be our recommendations? Um, again, you know, we can't approve anything because we need quorum here. Um, to do that, but um, I think we can continue on that discussion, um, especially from the last meeting. It sounded like uh, in July that uh, we were kind of all wrapping our heads around things. We were trying to gather as much information as we could. Um, we were wanting to know, you know, what if there was any guidance that was available to us. And so um, I think that um, you know that's that's been done as 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 well as it can be so far um, with the information that we do have. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to personally just share that it was very, um, it was very helpful. And I learned a lot from the state, from attending the stakeholders meeting, um, just kind of seeing where community members were at, how they were feeling, um, how they uh, were seeing this uh, particular issue um, and, contributing to uh, providing, you know, information about, you know, what the process would look like. Um, and so it was, it was very helpful um, in hearing, you know, also stories from uh, community members. Um, but, you know, we're still, we're still um, going along with, you know, understanding exactly the, the gravity of, of everything, because I think it was agreed upon from the last meeting that you know, this this goes beyond just a, a plaque missing from a park. 
you know, there's there's all these other important um, issues that need to be addressed. And so it feels like um, as everyone is talking, everybody is learning and listening and reading and and whatnot that, um, you know, articulation around what we should do is starting to come together. So um, wanted to just provide some um, time for us as a commission to to also do that. Um, I see uh, Commissioner Denise Suni, your hands raised. Do you wanna wanna go next? Thank you. Um, so I like to recommend, um, and I know that we can't take action, but I'd like for us to think about um, waiting for the report from the stakeholders meeting, waiting for the report from Terry um, from his con communications with the tribal um, contacts and then using those reports to formulate our recommendations um, while taking into consideration that there might be continuing research on this issue and taking that into account. Um, Commissioner Thelma or Marissa or Kim, do you, any thoughts you wanna share? Uh, this is some Thelma. Uh, I do agree. Uh, there's uh, many unknowns still yet to be discovered. And um, there's other information that is out there. Um, and I think we need to compile, you know, what we have. And also we need to see um, with, with those reports so from the stakeholders meeting, what the input is and um, and also with Terry's and but with we need to compile all that information, you know, to see what direction we're going. Um, but we do still um, need more information. Uh, I was um, invited um, with uh, Dr. Hohola um, to he's have been doing this ongoing um, uh, information or um, gathering that was asked of him by the Fairview Cemetery um, board. And because what they're doing is they're trying to uh, put together uh, and identify in certain areas and uh, for like uh, historical um, uh, um, reasons. And so they contacted Dr. Hohola and uh, they invited or he asked to, um, you know, look at the site. And uh, a lot of this information isn't coming out, but that Fairview um, Cemetery that's near um, the um, football stadium, it's on Yale. Uh, now uh, from 1880 something to 1933, uh, a lot of the uh, burials were held there. And then it transferred over to the 4-H. Um, or it maybe it didn't, maybe it was at the same time. We just don't know that. And um, as of knowing um, names um, of students, um, that's, uh, it's not very, uh, it's not available. They you know the records were lost, um, but he was able to get like a dozen um, tags or information uh, from the Fairview Cemetery. They, could, they kept good records. Uh, however, there was like 73 plots there and he was only able to get 12. So see a lot of this information does need to get back to um, a committee to you know, look at and, and more, get more in depth. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, Marissa or Kim? Uh, this is Kim. Um, I was aware that this was happening in our community. Um, I think there's a lot of investigation that needs to happen on, on their end for us to come to a decision of how we're gonna support. Of course, I support um, where we can go to recognize that this burial site happened in Albuquerque. I'm just not sure where to start. So I'm, I'm letting you guys lead the way and then we can go on from there. Um, yes, and I appreciate everyone's time in, in all of this because the Canada burial sites was a huge national issue and still ongoing. And um, I'm sure there's more that we don't know about. Thank you. 
um, this is Thelma again, just to um, add a little to, to that, I think the last time we had talked um, at the mayor's office when we had the meeting is that um, it was really two issues. Um, it's the issue of getting the information from the burials, uh, but it's also the issue of, um, uh, and of um, contacting, getting um, input from the tribes and the issue of what to do with the park. So uh, really we're talking about two separate um, issues. Commissioner Naranjo, did you wanna chime in? Sure, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I apologize, I'm not on Zoom this or on the camera this morning. I have not very good service where I'm at right now, but um, I do really appreciate all the updates provided by Don and Terry on the 4-H Park issue, and then also um, the summary that you provided, Chairwoman, on um, the stakeholders meeting. And I, I, I just wanted to say that I agree uh, with the comments so far that we. Um, kind of just wait until that that report is um, compiled and take a look at it and then develop some recommendations based on um, where our current discussions are and then also just taking taking into consideration um, all of the community input thank you um i i agree um i I mean, some of the things that came out of if if uh, you weren't able to get on the stakeholders meeting was, um, you know, these kind of um, general agreements or visions um, of what should happen um, seemed pretty apparent to me as far as that um, there, you know, the 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 park itself needs to change um, from what it's considered a recreational area right now under under um, or at least after there's more information on confirmation of what's really there um, and you know if if remains where are they at um, and being able to to do that in a way that is uh, respectful um of you know the families and the community and there was a lot of information or ideas i think provided about you know ways to go about that um but also uh what was really interesting was just wanting you know this this need to really um include as as uh you know many thoughts as or perspectives that could could be um, the stakeholders meeting really focused on, you know, community organizations, indiv individuals who worked with families or uh, worked in the community. Um, and one of the feedback that I heard was, uh, you know, possibly asking if there were any uh, students who, you know, were still alive to ask them, you know, what they thought uh, should happen, asking, you um, maybe, uh, you know, who are probably now adults, um, you know, asking if if they had any input as far as, you know, what should happen. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's something to, the, the city can consider um, in forming uh, another kind of focus group. Um, and if, if there's any community members that feel, feel the need to or want to provide that type of input, it would be another perspective um, from individuals that actually attended um, and maybe focus on, you know, the future of the site as well. Um, but I think at least uh, for the moment, um, trying to assist Terry in um, getting a response from the tribes is something that this commission can do um, to put a little bit more pressure on the surrounding tribes, or at least from the um, tribal representatives, um, the the tribes that you you represent, um, in in trying to get um, them to respond, um, you know, at least a connection to be made directly with this issue, 
um, I think that's somewhere we can we can assist or we can help with. Um, and I think just being continually updated by Don and Terry about the information, but it, it would be good um, at some point soon to draft a recommendation of, you know, just kind of initial steps uh, to the mayor. Um, so if, if everyone feels okay about um, getting more information to be able to do that, um, to, to make, you know, kind of that informed response to the mayor, um, I think that that sounds good. Any other thoughts? Comment. I have a comment. Yeah. Um, so it's too bad we don't have a quorum. Um, I think that um, research will continue and that we shouldn't wait for all the research to come in because it could take months or and even years. But um, Thelma made a good point, and that is that we're really talking about two issues. And I really think that once we get the report from the stakeholders meeting and the report from Terry regarding his communications with tribes, that we can start formulating our recommendations uh, using those two, two reports. Um, and I'd like to, I, I'm not sure, I mean, now without a quorum, we can't take action until another month. Um, so, um, you know, I'd like to recommend that we start drafting our report. I don't know that we can do that without taking action. But I really think that, that um, I mean, here it is, month, month two. September is going to take us to month three and the mayor's waiting, right? Um, I think we need to act, but I'm not quite sure how to do that without a quorum. I guess I'd like some um, advice on that. What we could do is specifically uh, reach out to the rest of the commission that is not in attendance um, and request, a, again, a special emergency meeting um, as soon as possible to just approve and vote on this one action item. And it would just be a matter of just bringing everybody to quorum to say, do we approve to provide a written formal uh, a statement or letter uh, recommendation to the mayor? And then at that point, we would be able to start it. Um, that's one idea. Um, I have a question on the subcommittee. Um, do we have to have a quorum to approve that to, to create that subcommittee? Yes, I believe so. If it's not an existing subcommittee. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I have spoken to the mayor's office, uh, particularly after that uh, first emergency meeting. Um, there's nothing that does not uh, prohibit the commission members individually working on an issue. Um, so you guys, you guys can do the work individually and then come together at some point then to provide you know, the results of your work and then create you know, a report from that. But again, I agree with Denise too. I think something should come soon. Uh, again, the event actually occurred almost to, uh, yeah, um, almost two months now, uh, June 29th. So we're already looking at the second month and then now into September will be the third month. Uh, I understand and I realize, you know, certain issues like this are going to and do need time. Uh, but I think what's gonna be important is um, even providing initial thoughts and recommendations on, on what steps to take uh, just to initially begin to address the issue um, to the mayor. And then uh, again, we understand it's gonna be a long, it will be a long process. There's so many levels of issues that are tied to this particular issue. Uh, we're already looking at how we're gonna 
incorporate education on the on the issue, how we incorporate, you know, a, a new potential, you know, new uh, burial or not burial, a memorial. Uh, and so there's a lot of thoughts that are going out there about this particular issue, but we're also looking into the future on what it may look like. So we're already strategizing so that what we find out and hear from the tribes and then the community as a whole, uh, we're prepared to move quickly on it. Uh, so again, I think it'd be important uh, to provide at least some initial guidance and thoughts on um, what the mayor and the city should do, uh, just to give them uh, some guidance uh, from this commission. Because I think uh, the mayor is looking to this commission to provide uh, guidance on this and recommendations. And I know uh, there are other, other uh, particularly the parks and recreation is also uh, looking to hear from the commission also. So I think uh, not waiting too long will, will not be good. <laughs> so, so I just want, I want to add that, add those thoughts to this. Thank you. And I just want to recognize uh, Commissioner uh, Lorenzo Jim. Are you present with us? We, we missed you. <laughs> Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, apologies. I had to jump on another call, but I was pushing my way back to joining you all. So. That is great because now we have quorum. <laughs> and you came at a great time because we are in discussion right now of um, continuing uh, continuing the discussion around the Albuquerque Indian School burial site and plaque. And we were just kind of sharing our thoughts so far now that it's been uh, a month since we first started this conversation and um, some commission members have um, been able to, um, you know, learn more about it, to gain more information, um, participate in the stakeholders meeting to get, you know, gain some more perspective and information from community members. And then also in hearing the updates from Don and Terry as far as, um, you know, the city's um, uh, perspectives and initiatives. So um, I guess the, the question right now is that we're posing um, and because we've needed uh, um, uh, a quorum to take any action items um, regarding this particular issue is um, is do we want to move forward with formal start starting to formalize um, uh, initial recommendations to the mayor? Um, you know, as as a commission, we uh, we are one of the groups identified as providing those recommendations for him, um, and so we were just kind of sharing our thoughts around that. And if we want to take a vote today to form a subcommittee to um, begin drafting um, those recommendations, um, you know, I think we should we should talk about that. And so, um, do you have any thoughts, comments, um, Commissioner Jim, on that? Um, I think. Any recommendation at this point, I think, has already been, I think, through discussions. I think now it's a good time to start moving. Uh, like you said, I think address it and, and sort of build a bridge or a gap between whether it's a subcommittee and the mayor's office. But I think it's, I, I, um, I, mean, I guess you could say I vote to sort of start moving some of these recommendations. But as also just keeping in mind, I think in our the, uh, last forum, there were highlights, I think, for each panelist of what sort of uh, the voices express, the concerns express, the ideas. So I, I, I'm not sure if those are going to be part of the recommendations or considerations. I'm not sure if they're picking it out of a hat or, you know, um, doing a vote or if that's going to be. Uh, uh, like a, um, a a discussion and then sort of picking out sort of through a vote process, I guess, what the recommendations are going to be. Um, those are my initial thoughts and comments, Madam Chair. 
Yeah, and just to give a, a little bit of background on how we've um, formed sub subcommittees, we would just vote that there would be a subcommittee to provide like draft a letter or maybe um, draft a statement, and then it would go out to um, commission members just for like a final review and edit. Um, but I mean, at least in my mind, I would think that uh, what 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 it would look like what this document would look like are kind of these kind of high level recommendations to the mayor that we want him to address um and if we have any specifics on like either individuals we want him to contact and reach out to any particular organizations or programs that we want um, him to um, reach out and be involved we can add those in there, but it can start from kind of this high level, like we want to see that the city is engaged with community to to um, provide a platform to give feedback on the future of this site. And we can, you know, make it as detailed as we want afterwards. So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, entirely specific um, at this point. It could be that, you know, we want to be continually updated and to continue to provide input and any new findings in the future. Um, we can state something like that. And also, um, I think in the past, we've also provided like a statement, our support as a commission on a particular issue or bringing to light on um, what we want um, to see and kind of providing um, support for the community um, around, you know, our role and also uh, what we're hoping that the community also participates so we can like kind of call to action um, either maybe it's the tribes, maybe it's the residents of um, Albuquerque to support um, this particular, you know, ask that we're, we're that we're looking for. So um, basically, we could approve for a commission to like, you know, a couple of commission members to formulate that initial draft and then it would go out to commission members to provide input to say you know yes i agree with this being included or no i don't think we should include that so that's kind of how that process has happened in the past but we would we would do that pretty quickly like maybe over a week or two no more than two weeks time um so we can get it to the mayor and and published um but there is an editing process and and the commission members are involved in that in that process as well. It just begins with like, like two to three commission members to start it. Um, Commissioner Zuni, you had your hand raised. Uh, yes, thank you. So I'd like to motion to create a subcommittee to receive the reports from the stakeholders meeting and from Terry regarding his, um, his communications with, with the tribes and use those reports to begin drafting the first recommendation report to the mayor's office. Um, and the subcommittee will, um, the report will be sent to the commission for review and approval. That's my motion, thank you. Okay, I have a motion from um, Commissioner Denise Suni. Do I have a second and is there any other additions or comments to that motion. Um, yeah, Denise, can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. Thank you. I'll try, okay. So I'd like to motion to create a subcommittee that will receive reports from the stakeholders meeting and from Terry Sloan from his communications with um, the tribes that he's contacted, we will use those reports to begin drafting the, a first recommendation report to the mayor's office. And this draft will be sent to the entire commission for review and approval with the intent that um, it's one of many recommendations um, contingent upon other research that is um, continuing to be uh, brought forth. I, I would like to um, add to maybe like a first initial response and re recommendation. 
So this is this will this is not to say that this is our only one on this particular issue, but it's our initial one. Uh, Commissioner Naranjo, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. I um, I just wanted to second um, Denise's motion and also um, say that I'm happy to be part of that subcommittee in drafting the, the recommendations, the first draft. Great, thank you. All right, I have a second from Commissioner Naranjo. Do, um, can I have a vote of yes? or no or abstain from commission members who are present. And you can write it in the chat or verbalize it. Uh, this is Thelma, I vote yes. And I also am interested on uh, helping with the subcommittee. This is Lorenzo, I vote yes. Thank you. I have a yes from Commissioner Zuni and a yes from Commissioner Gleason, and that's a yes for me as well. And I will also volunteer uh, my time to uh, support the drafting of, of the document as well. Um, the motion is approved. Um, thank you, everyone. Is there any other commission members that would like to be part of that in uh, first drafting? Okay, I have a, uh, I, I missed the, the rest of your comment, um, Commissioner Zuni. So Commissioner Zuni as well it would like to be part of that first draft, initial drafting. Was I saying something? Yes. You need my... Go ahead. Um, so I wasn't saying anything. Do... Okay, so clarify your question. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just, <laughs> that's okay. I was just stating that I missed your comment in the comments that you would volunteer to be on the subcommittee. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see here. Uh, can somebody um, volunteer to just send a group email out so we can schedule a time? Um, next week to meet together and and do that or i can <laughs> i can do it <laughs> is that okay i didn't know if somebody wanted to do it first <laughs> okay i'll i'll send i'll send an email um out to um those that volunteered um and if you can just look for um available time on your schedules uh starting next week okay thank you um, the next item for uh, discussion um, is, uh, let's see here, discussion of commission monthly report to the mayor presented by Commissioner Denise Suni. So I'll hand it over to you, Denise. So I think, I, I, so when we met um, and um, the last time when we didn't have, during the emergency meeting, we didn't have a quorum. I um, wanted to recommend that we do monthly reports to the mayor, but I think that um, the motion that I made and the action that we just took will cover that. So I think we're covered. Does everyone agree? Do you wanna provide a little background of how that, um idea kind of came up in the last conversation if, if uh, commission um, members. Sure. So um, we had an emergency meeting where um, to talk about this issue, the burial site and you know the 4-H park um, and the research that was continuing um, on this issue. And um, one of the, the one of the reports that was made by Terry is that the mayor was really expecting to hear from us from the commission, and um, so Terry told us about his role um, with this. Um, and I don't know if you want to expand on it at um, today, Terry, but um, 
I then recommended that we do monthly reports to the mayor, um, but on this issue and that we were continuing to look at this issue and, and um, that we were working on formulating a, a, a response. Um, but I really think that today's motion, which was to do an initial recommendation report, that's really what I was trying to get at. Um, I'm not even sure that doing monthly reports um, are the way to go um, after attending the stakeholders meeting. I think that there's too much information coming out too quickly and that our monthly reports wouldn't keep up with the information that's coming out. That's continuing to come out from, from Terry's office. And I really think that Terry is the best person to continue providing, you know, to work on a day-to-day -day basis with the mayor's office. Um, and I really think that the best thing we can do in our, our role in this is to provide a formal recommendation or recommendations. Thank you, thanks. Any other comments or thoughts from other commission members? And uh, just to note, we lost quorum. <laughs> um, Commissioner Marisa Naranjo, um, if you see her comment in the comment section, she had to um, leave. But any other um, thoughts on that? I mean, what I, I think what I was going to propose was um, uh, Terry, and, and feel free to chime in here. Is um, if you, you know, I I'm I'm okay with providing like a brief summary, even just if it's like a bullet, some bullet points on the past um, kind of uh, action items or things that the commission has been involved with. Um, at you know whenever you provide your your report to the mayor, I can um, submit a you know a summary of that uh, along with yours, so that it's not something separate, but it's something that's just also included with with your report. And um, you know we 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 meet anyway just to check in in between commission meetings. So um, maybe that's something that we could do. Um, during our check-ins, if that, that suffices. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, when, when I am uh, updating the mayor, it's, it's just kind of not on a set uh, timeline. <clears throat> what I've done is I've sent him information as things change as, or as things uh, come to new information comes to light um, and then giving him an update on where we are at. So it won't be anything that's going to be like uh, on a set day or time that I would be doing that. Because um, again, like everybody's understanding, it's a moving target. It's constantly changing and, and on a day-to-day -day basis all, all, almost. Um, but what I think, um, again, I think just, uh, I think Denise is right. Uh, I think a monthly report uh, may be too long. But I think as, as you guys create or put together recommendations or thoughts on this particular issue that it would be good, you know, to send something as an update also to the mayor. I don't think there's really any specific day or time that, that is uh, needed um, to do that. Uh, Cause I think any input at this point will help uh, because again, the city is learning, you know, this is a whole new, I hate to say a ball game for everybody to really think about um, what we're what we're seeing and uh, hearing and understanding from other organizations and even from other uh, cities is that they're watching what we're doing and how we're doing it and so we're actually in a sense setting precedence so I think as this group thinks about how we should do this or how, you know what the process or what recommendations um, I would just say get it together and then do it and provide it. Because again, uh, we don't, we're not following any any playbook. We're not following any any guidance. Uh, 
I've asked Deb Holland for guidance if she has any yet. Uh, I have not heard anything back from her at that level uh, on the boarding school issue. Um, again, you know, there's a there's a lot of moving pieces. We've heard a lot of information in in the stakeholders meeting. Um, I think. There are different levels of, of recommendations or issues that are, that are that are present in this issue, and you know, there's a beginning level, as, and then as as we move along, and I think you're right in saying that this is that it should be a high level recommendations to the mayor, uh, kind of promoting uh, ideas on action. I think those can evolve, and and they should evolve over time as as you become more aware and apprised of the situation. But I think. Um, in my opinion, as we, as we sit down and think about things, um, we, we, we all know what we think we should do, in a sense, from our experiences and work. And I think uh, Commissioner Jim was correct in saying that a lot has already been talked about and said. Um, initially, uh, I didn't provide any um, recommendations to the mayor because we were already doing them is what my feeling was, we were already doing what I would have recommended. So our actions were at the same time, what I would have recommended. But what I would do is uh, at, at a later time is provide a, a timeline of, of what we did do and that uh, that they would have followed what, what I would have recommended for the city to do. Um, again, the commission has been identified as one of the lead groups that will, would be providing guidance to the city, so that's why uh, I think it's very important that this commission provide some information or some recommendations soon, because um, in all our communications with the tribes, even, even with the public, this commission has been identified. It's going to be taking a great a, a lead in this issue. So again, um, it's, it's, it's um, a good, a good, good time now to begin to provide that type of guidance. I mean, we have a lot of expertise on this commission. And I think just putting your, you know, the thoughts together and getting it on paper will really help. Uh, and as, 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 as uh, Commissioner Jim was talking about, I think one thing we are going to do is we're gonna look at everything. We're gonna accumulate all information we're getting uh, via emails through our meetings and, and, and the reports and we're going to assessing, you know, uh, levels of, of of importance based on what we're hearing from the community, what we're, what we're going to hear from the tribes, and then try to create some sort of a plan or idea or thoughts of what we think we should do. So that is a strategic uh, plan that we are going to be looking at on how we're going to assess uh, the community's recommendations and also the tribes. And then we are also anticipating having a, a tribal representative stakeholders meeting, which is like tribal departments, because they have expressed interest. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate government from public, you know, because those are two different capacities. So we will be having a, a like a, a tribal departmental um, or organization stakeholders meeting. But we also will be having probably another stakeholders meeting for the public as we're beginning to get more information and provide updates and get additional uh, requests from that. Um, I know one thing that has been brought up uh, by many already is that we need to have some sort of a healing ceremony of some sort for the site, um, just to recognize that it's, that it's there and then also recognize what occurred and so forth. So, but that, that's something that also can be, you know, created, you know, by, uh, tribal entities, the tribes themselves, or the Native American organizations. But we also do understand that we do need to make sure we're, we're including input from the, the community and particularly the families that may have been involved. Um, so we're really looking right now as, as to do as much research as possible to find who, who was there if, if that's possible. Uh, it sounds like this uh, research with the Fairview Cemetery, Cemetery may provide uh, additional insight, but we're also hoping to get information from the tribes too, as they confirm that they did have students at the Albuquerque Union School. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. 
Any other comments, questions? Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next agenda item, number five, Commission Administrative Matters. And you might um, see that this uh, section of our agenda shift uh, slightly. Um, I'll provide some more um, clarification and um, information uh, to the rest of the commission members um, that are not present today about, you know, what this kind of means or uh, what it might, what it could look like. But uh, one thing that we do have um, during this meeting is updates by commission sector and subcommittee updates. And it would be really great to hear specifically from um, each um, a commission member who is assigned a, a sector to report on if there's any issues that need to be brought forth for, um, by to the commission, if there's any actions that need to be um, taken, um, and if there's any updates on current subcommittees, um, it would be great to hear specifically from each one. And if there are no updates, then, you know, um, it's uh, it would just provide an opportunity for um, uh, those uh, representatives of the sectors or the subcommittees to, you know, say um, yes uh, or no if there's um, any updates. So I want to just kind of give everybody a heads up that um, this section is going to be more specific in future uh, meetings. Um, so, um, and again, I'll provide some more uh, clarification through email. And um, I know, um, uh, Commissioner Jim, you've had some some questions about, you know, what exactly does it mean to uh, be um, the rep for your sector? I think we're all figuring that out too. We're all learning what that means. Um, but I think um, at least for future meetings, uh, um, that it's 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 available for you to bring any issues that you feel are important or pertinent to that particular general you know area or topic or you know um you know whatever you feel like uh, needs to be um on the commission's agenda so um and i don't think it necessarily needs to fit within that you know title or headline but um, you know, really whatever you feel like um, needs to be um, on the radar of the of the mayor. Um, in, in a sense of, of thinking it in this way, you know, what do we want to advise the mayor on in this particular area? Um, so if, if you want to present or if you want to bring somebody to present that particular um, issue or concern during that time, you're more than welcome to. I think that would be really great to bring other community members to share, you know, what it is that they're, you know, needing support on or they want the mayor to know about, um, this would be a great place to, to bring those folks in. Um, and again, um, just with the strategic plan actions and updates, um, we'll continue to have um, that just as a standing item, um, as well as, uh, you know, updates to um, other um, regular items like the filling the commission's um, vacancies and then also planning for the meeting agenda for um, the, the next uh, for the next month. But um, I wanted to just kind of, you know, give everyone a heads up about that, that this may look a little different um, just so we can get, um, you know, feedback and uh, updates from everybody. So is there any questions regarding that update? Are there any commission sector or subcommittee updates that commission members want to share at this time? Sure, I, uh, Madam Chair, I like, I'll just add on to that thought and um, just, you know, I'm aware you know this this is um, really the, a large community um, focus and I think moving on for like example culture it's just it always 
it, it's it's already defined and I think it's just um, I, I could just share um, updates and I think my involvement in the community as well as I, I think highlighting and supporting other initiatives around culture um, and culture being an ambiguous term as well. I think what that means is community, um, whether it's language, uh, community uh, support, you know, highlights in the community uh, initiatives. Um, so yeah, I think rolling with it, I mean, something I could do. Um, okay. uh, just some highlights for the commission or members that are here, um, just uh, around culture. And the, so you're aware, um, I, there's two parts I think um, I wanted to bring up and maybe even um, put on the next agenda. And I think I've been sort of pushing that now for a while, but I think it's again, culture, um, especially with uh, in, engaging in the community here in Albuquerque, um, we got a chance to go to an in-person. Um, I think most of the communities were able to experience that. I think um, with, uh, in regards to um, activities, you know, cultural events. So we're able to sort of come back together, I think in person, but a lot of that is starting to change again. Um, you know, I think we're taking precautions, but um, we are working with the city of, with um, the city of Albuquerque, as well as um, this ongoing conversation uh, with the with Albuquerque Public Schools uh, Indian Education. So we met this week um, and actually did a walkthrough, a site visit to, with an area um, in the South Valley called Los Padillas. And we're looking at creating for students um, a cultural land-based learning area or land-based learning site. Um, it's a 10 acre land. Um, it's uh, actually a sanctuary. And we're looking at creating um, a learning outside learning classroom um, where students could be able to sort of rotate um, possibly as part of uh, their learning, a field trip, or even a, an after school type program um, where language would be sort of land-based directed, um, seasonal uh, kinds of uh, cultural learning or planning um, whether it's, um, um, you know, planting to harvesting as well as, you know, wellness activities. So um, this is an ongoing development and I think getting the commission involved um, and actually I may be hosting that site for like an in-person meeting could be on the agenda at some point. So it's a land lease deal um, between APS and um, most likely First Nation Community Health Source, um, the traditional wellness program to be specific, and then also involving the city of Albuquerque. So there's still <clears throat> that discussion as to <clears throat> how this will sort of evolve, and, but it's a great opportunity. And I think um, having that here and available as a resource um, especially for youth, I think it's um, um, it's important to note to the commission and that everyone's aware of that. And then the second is, um, it's also my work that I, um, it, it's actually a need, an area, um, creating a, a cultural uh, care chaplain position at the University of New Mexico hospitals. So for the past five years, um, I was able to integrate care um, for patients, families um, who are at UNMH hospitals, as well as the adult psychiatric and children's psychiatric um, and then the cancer center. Um, I was doing this on sort of a limited time um, as casual pool, um, but the need is very high um, and, it, and it, it can be very culturally uh, relevant as well as culturally appropriate. And it's really providing comfort, uh, bedside care, as well as, um, you know, engaging in really just the, the comfort conversation. And, and if sometimes, 
as a practitioner myself, it's engaging in, I think, the, the prayer, um, as well as the, the healing reflections. Uh, it, it, it's been a process um, last five years, but it's also an important part of the, the need, providing that support and care for families. And um, I, I am not able to keep up, actually. Um, and I'm looking at support in the community uh, because based on the need, um, UNMH is offering possibly a full-time position for a cultural chaplain, a cultural care a Native American provider on site. Um, and with this new director, um, I would like to invite him maybe to the next or possibly a, a commission meeting to present on that um, from the director of pastoral care and possibly do an active recruitment or maybe ex explore a little bit more about that need and um, you know why it's important. But um, it's, it's another area of, I think important to note and I, I wanted to include the commission and just kind of give a highlight on the sector of culture. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that information, Commissioner Jim. Um, yeah, if you, um, if you want to invite um, a guest to present, um, you know, uh, just uh, you can, you can definitely take um, um, uh, initial steps to do that. And if you want to CC me on any of those emails, and then once we get um, the individual or the or the organization confirmed, then we'll go ahead and put them on the on the agenda. So if it's not next one, it can be you know the one after that too. So whenever you get confirmation of um, you know somebody that wants to share that um, that information with us, you know please please let me know. We can we can make that happen. Yes, and thank you for that. And just to know, it is a unique position. And I think it's, and, and to sort of act on it, you know, to kind of provide support because it's, it's an underserved area with a large population of Native Americans, and whether they're uh, patients or families, um, to have that resource or access that support. I mean, it's, it's this is a, an important, I think collaboration that has been started, you know, with in regards to the, the spiritual education or spiritual care program at the University Hospital. Definitely, and I I had no no clue that that was even available. So that's really great to know, and we can help to promote that that that's available. Um, you know, especially in the the times that we're living, and um, we're gonna need all the support and care that we can because um, we're not out of this pandemic quite yet, so. Any other updates? Um, for the current subcommittees, um, I have no updates. I will put on the agenda though um, to update on the vacancies uh, that we have thus far and just um, you know, um, I believe uh, Dr. Maggie George and I think it's, is it, is it you, Kim, um, that are on that commission with me um, to, you know, inquire, uh, recruit, and also to um, uh, review the applications that do come in so we can, maybe we can touch base. Um, soon before the next meeting, um, but I'll go ahead and put it on the next agenda as an as an item. And then we can also ask uh, commission members at that time if they would like to uh, make that a standing item on the agenda as well. Okay, just wanted to ask if there was any updates on strategic plan and actions. Um, I I think the only one that I have really was um, to update everybody on kind of the current <laughs> status of our meetings. I, we all had, I think, intended to have an in-person um, 
commission meeting uh, or slash retreat, uh, you know, just some a long time to get together. But it sounds like that is not going to happen. Um, we the last month, um, Terry and I, we both inquired um, places that we could hold in person meetings, uh, free space. I think we called, um, you know, a handful of places, um, including community centers, United Way, the open space. And right now, everything is starting to shut down, um, or they're not sure um, whether they're going to open their meeting spaces to outside community members. So, um, I think everybody's just really taking precautions again about, you know, um, preventing the further spread of COVID and now the variants um, that are out. Um, so, I I think we're just going to continue on with uh, virtual uh, meetings. Um, and then I'll continue to provide everybody updates through email if that changes. Um, we were able to hold the special meeting in the mayor's office. I don't know if that's still available to do that or how many members will feel comfortable um, coming in person. Um, but we, I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that, um, that community space is just not available right now, even if it's you know outside, um, it's really hard to find. Um, you know, for the, the number of people that we have and potentially if we're, you know, inviting the public to also uh, be able to to listen in on the, the meetings, it's becoming a little bit of a challenge. So um, thank you for your patience in that and understanding. Any questions or comments regarding? Um, uh, Madam Chair, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, what um, sector did um, Brittany, um, did she uh, represent? Uh, government. Okay. And also held the vice chair uh, position. And that's another item that I could add for the next agenda too, is to discuss um, uh, the the roles. Um, you know, there's an open vacancy for co-chair as well right now. So, if people are interested, what we would do is put it on the agenda item. Uh, we would submit nominations and then take a vote. And maybe it's a discussion at the next agenda, but we not do elections um, just to see if we want to do that with the current membership that we have, or if we want to wait to gain some more, um, to fill some of those vacancies, because now I think it's at four or five vacancies. I have a comment here from Kim. Yes, please do. So please put it on the agenda for discussion. Does that sound okay with other commission members? This is Thelma, yes, I agree. And Lorenzo, is that okay? Does that sound okay with you? Just putting that on um, those items on the next agenda. Okay, I have a yes from Kim. Yes. Okay. So the agenda items I have so far um, are update on vacancies, a discussion on um, you know, just the vacant roles for the commission members, and then also um, possibly uh, presentation um, regarding um, uh, commission members. Um, uh, uh, is there a specific person that you are thinking of reaching out to, um, Lorenzo, that you want me to specify or or not yet? I just have um, okay. um, pastoral care. Yeah, I had mentioned uh, to him before, that, and it was a discussion. Um, that has been ongoing. Okay. And that we they 
have set up um, a position, a full-time position that like, I think this is sort of um, the next step is to, um, I think do this in this way where we could actively recruit. Um, but, um, but I did mention the commission to him and he's open to presenting. He's a new director. Okay. Um, UNMH, the, the Spiritual Care and Education Department. His name is Skip Murphy. And I'll go ahead and I'll talk with him and see if we could do a presentation together on, on, on bringing this to the attention of the commission. And um, again, it's I think it's an important part of our community and especially for our families that are in need um, while they're there at the in all of UNMH hospitals to offer okay. this, um, an ongoing um, support in this position. It's a unique position, and I think my involvement would be really integrating them and training them um, as to what cultural care is and, and really having sort of that, uh, as well as their role in, in bridging or providing support even for staff um cultural competency building there so there's quite a bit of things that i think we hope to achieve and make this sort of a um, integrated part of again the support of our families and communities okay great yeah just sending me the um if you if you want to send me the the more detailed uh, title that okay. would be that'd be helpful We'll do. Uh, this is Thelma. That was exactly what I was going to ask. If you can um, put um, his uh, the spelling of his name and then his title um, in the chat, if you can. Thank you. And then the last agenda item I have is just the continued um, uh, you know, updates and um, if there's any other actions we need to um, move on for the Albuquerque Indian School Burial Site and Plot. So I think that'll be a continuing one until we feel like, you know, we get a consensus from everyone that um, it's it's okay to take it off the agenda. So, all right, that's, that's the last item. Um, uh, before adjournment, any other last thoughts, comments? All right, thank you so much, everyone. Um, let's see, do I have, I don't have quorum to make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, but we'll go ahead and adjourn. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a safe weekend and, uh, you know, just, uh, wish you all well and take care, please. And, and again, be safe. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. See you, everybody. Thank you, Thelma.